We'll begin this lecture with a discussion of pH and pKa. You should already be familiar with the term Ka. The Ka is the acid dissociation constant, which is a measure of the strength of an acid relative to water acting as the base. You may also be familiar with pH. pH is the negative log of the hydronium concentration. pKa is simply the negative log of the Ka. You already know that the stronger the acid, the more the product side is favored. So if product is favored, an acid will have a large Ka and a large hydronium concentration. When you have a large hydronium concentration, the pH is low and also the pKa. This is because of the negative sign in front of the log. These are the definitions of pH and pKa. pH is the negative log of the hydronium concentration, and pKa is the negative log of the Ka. pH is a variable quantity. It's dependent upon the acid concentration and the strength of the acid and the base. pKa is a fixed quantity. The equilibrium constant does not change at a particular temperature. So the Ka and the pKa are inherent to the acid and the base used. Now, what is log exactly? In base 10, the log is simply the exponent. So if I wanted to find the negative log of 10 to the minus 3, 3 is the exponent, and I will change the sign. So it is plus 3. If I wanted to find the negative log of 0 0.0001, this can be expressed as 1 times 10 to the minus 4, so the exponent is minus 4, and changing the sign gives me 4. If you don't know how to already, learn to use the EE key on your calculator. It will make it much easier than trying to type in 1 times 10 caret minus 4. And you don't usually need to remember to use parentheses, because the EE takes that into account. So if you were asked, what is the negative log of 0 0.0025, we know that value can also be expressed as 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So we know the log is going to be something close to 3, but a little bit lower. And it'll turn out to be 2.6 if you push that into your calculator. So here's a question for you. What is the pH with the hydronium concentration is this number here? If we count how many times we need to move the decimal back so that it's behind the 1, we wind up with 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So our exponent is minus 6, so I'm sure you can choose the correct letter. Let's try it again. What is the pH when the hydronium concentration is equal to 0 0.001? This would represent 1 times 10 to the minus 3, so I'm sure you can get the negative log. What if you're not given hydronium? What if you're given an acid? Determining the pH of weak acids is beyond the scope of this class. But for a strong acid, like perchloric acid, we know that the perchloric acid concentration is also equal to the hydronium concentration, since strong acids dissociate completely in water. This time, let's try your calculator out and choose the correct letter. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the idea that neutral solutions have pH equal to 7. That means the hydronium concentration is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. When the pH is lower than 7, we have what's known as an acidic solution. That means the hydronium concentration is greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 7. For example, 0 0.001 is greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 7, and this would give us a pH of 3, which is an acidic solution. I'm sure many of you are also familiar with the idea that when the pH is greater than 7, you have what's called a basic solution. That means the hydronium is less than 1 times 10 to the minus 7 in concentration. 
An example would be 1 times 10 to the minus 10. This number is smaller than 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And it gives us a pH equal to 10, which is indeed a basic solution. So a low pH means a high hydronium concentration. And of course, the lower the pH, the more acidic the solution. The higher the pH, the more basic the solution. So what I'd like to do here is compare the pH and the pKa of three different acids. We're going to start with hydrochloric acid, and our concentration will be 0.01 molar. Here is the net reaction that occurs when hydrochloric acid is placed into water. We know it's an extensive reaction. The Ka of hydrochloric acid in water is much, much greater than 1. For this example, I'll be using a Ka of 1 times 10 to the 9th, since that is close to the Ka value in methanol, which is similar to water. So when you place HCl in water, you get complete dissociation of the proton from the chloride. I'm going to bring you back to reaction tables. If our initial concentration of HCl is 0.01 molar, and this reaction goes extensively forward, then the change in concentration is that all our HCl becomes hydronium and chloride, so our final concentrations are 0.01 molar hydronium and 0.01 molar chloride. So let's think about the pH and pKa of this situation. The hydronium is 1 times 10 to the minus 2, so if pH is negative log of hydronium, this gives us a pH of 2. The Ka for this is not given in our table, but we'll use 10 to the 9th for this example, which means the pKa is the negative log of 10 to the 9th, so our pKa is minus 9. All right, we have a strong acid with a pH of 2 and a pKa of minus 9. Let's compare that to some other acids. What if we used nitrous acid? which has a Ka value of 4 times 10 to the minus 4. That means that most of the material stays as reactant, and we make a tiny amount of product. If you used a reaction coordinate diagram for this, it would be uphill. So what are the pH and pKa of 0.01 molar nitrous acid? Nitrous acid is a weak acid, so if we write the Ka reaction and start with our initial concentrations, calculating the final concentrations is beyond the scope of this class, but I can tell you that it shifts forward a tiny amount. 0.0018 molar of our nitrous acid goes forward to nitrite and hydronium. And we have these final equilibrium concentrations. And if you want to check my math, you just have to take 0.0018 multiplied by 0.0018 divided by 0.0082, and you would get a value that's close to 4 times 10 to the minus 4. So don't worry about this, and someday you might learn in Chemistry 201. What is the pH of this solution? The hydronium concentration is 0.0018. So if we take our formula to determine the pH, we wind up with a pH of 2.7. How about the Ka? The Ka is 4 times 10 to the minus 4, so the negative log of that gives us 3.4. So do you see what has happened? For the strong acid, the pH was 2, and the pKa was minus 9. Now we have a weaker acid, so the pH is higher because we've made less hydronium, and the pKa is also a higher value because the equilibrium constant is smaller. How about hypochlorous acid? This is again a weak acid, and it's weaker than nitrous acid. The Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8. So here is our Ka reaction. And I'll start with my same initial concentration, 0.01 molar, and it goes a teeny bit forward, even less than the previous reaction, 0.00002 molar of our reactant goes forward to make product. 
So these are our final equilibrium concentrations. So our hydronium concentration is 0 0.00002. And when we determine the pH, it's even higher. It's now 4.7. And here is our Ka value. And when we determine our pKa, it's higher than the previous example. It's now 7.5. So here is a table where we can compare the results. Here are the Ka values for our three acids, and here are the pKa's. Strong acids have low pKa's. Here are the hydronium concentrations from each of these acids in water with the same initial concentration. And you notice the strong acid has the low pH. And as we move to weaker acids, the pH is higher. So strong acids have a high hydronium concentration in water, a low pH, and a low pKa. Weak acids will have a low hydronium concentration in water relative to strong acids, a higher pH in solution, and a higher pKa. But we are still speaking of acids, so the pH, even though it rises, will still be less than 7. A word about water. Water is amphiprotic, so it can function as both an acid and a base. Here is the net reaction of two water molecules. You get a small amount of hydroxide and hydronium. Here is the arrow pushing for this. The Lewis base grabs a proton to make hydronium, and the Lewis acid lets go of the proton to become the conjugate base, which is hydroxide. And of course, this reaction is reversible. The equilibrium expression for this is products divided by reactants, but we only include the aqueous materials, so this is hydronium times hydroxide. This K has a very small value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. And it has a special name. Instead of Ka, it is Kw. This is known as the ion product of water. So if you look at the stoichiometry of that reaction, when water reacts with water, it makes a 1 to 1 ratio of hydronium to hydroxide. And it's also equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. How can we make that happen? Well, it happens if the hydronium is 1 times 10 to the minus 7, and the hydroxide is also 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And maybe you remember your exponent rules. When multiplying exponents, you add them. So minus 7 and a minus 7 give us minus 14. So we say that when the hydronium is equal to the hydroxide concentration, the solution is neutral. We have an acidic solution if hydronium is in excess, and a basic solution when hydroxide is in excess. Another trick with Kw. I am going to take the negative log of this Kw expression. You may remember that if you're multiplying within the log, you can bring it outside the log and add. So what I have here is the negative log of hydronium plus the negative log of hydroxide equals the negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. We have another name for the negative log of hydronium, that is pH. I bet you can guess what the negative log of hydroxide is called, pOH. And the negative log of this value is 14. So this turns out to be a very useful formula. pH plus pOH is equal to 14. That's when we're at room temperature. So this can help you very easily solve equations. If we know that the Kw is equal to hydronium times hydroxide, and it's equal to this value at room temperature, if we know the hydroxide concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 4, what do you have to add minus 4 to to get minus 14? I hope you say minus 10. Minus 4 and minus 10 make minus 14. So that's an easy way to get the hydronium concentration. 
This would be a situation when the hydronium concentration is less than the hydroxide concentration. So we would say the solution is basic. And you can see that it has a pH of 10. What if we knew hydroxide was 1 times 10 to the minus 9? Minus 9 plus what gives you minus 14? Well, I hope you're going to say minus 5. So this would be a situation when the hydronium concentration is greater than the hydroxide concentration. So we would say the solution is acidic. And we can see that the hydronium concentration is going to give us pH 5. So here is your question. I am giving you the hydroxide concentration. I'd like to know the hydronium concentration, the pH, and whether or not the solution is acidic or basic. I'm going to count the zeros and I get 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So you can use that value to get the pOH, and that value can give you the pH, and if you want the hydronium concentration, it's equal to 10 to the minus pH. And I believe once you know the pH, you can decide if it is acidic or basic. Here's another one. Again, you're being given the hydroxide concentration. This is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So use the same process as on the previous question and determine the hydronium concentration, the pH, and whether or not the solution is considered acidic or basic.